G'day, I'm Troy, and this is the Comic Book Movie Collector's Guide, the show about collecting all things superhero cinema. And today, we're going to take a gander at Captain America 2, Death Too Soon, on DVD. And we're going to try and answer the question, was this franchise a death too soon? Oh, not soon enough. Hmm. What do you say we get into it? Captain America 2, Death Too Soon, is a made-for-television superhero film with a runtime of 88 minutes. The film was first shown on the American TV network CBS on the 23rd of November 1979 and also had a theatrical release in France in 1980. The film was later released on DVD on the 18th of October 2011, with no Blu-ray or 4K HD release as of this video. It was written by Wilton Schiller and directed by Ivan Nagy. The film was produced by Universal Television, with it distributed by NBC Universal Syndication Studios. The film is loosely based on the Marvel Comics character of the same name, and it is not a direct adaption of the comic book. So if we look at the case here, this is the triple pack from the UK that I have here. I had the Aussie version last time, which is the double pack of the first and second movie. And of course now I've got the triple pack, which is first and second movie with the 1990 movie thrown in as well. So not bad. You can see they're trying to capitalize a little bit on the Chris Evans, Captain America movies, trying to get it out there i think this is around the time they were released as well just trying to capitalize on it and uh yeah like i mean it shows the triple pack but if you've got the individual covers you kind of get the idea if we look at the spine eh, that's not too bad it sort of blends in a bit actually on your shelf now if we look at the back uh it's just a rundown of the three movies uh, nothing too spectacular there just with the little blurts uh not a great deal there now if we look at the discs uh, I like it, colour discs, and they're different pictures too, which is really good. I like that they've put a little bit of effort into the discs. Not so much on the cover, but definitely some effort on the discs, which is good. So overall, this triple pack, it's it's okay, but it's very average in, in, uh, in saying that. So for, for that, I'm probably only going to give this a 6 out of 10. So the movie has a revolutionary terrorist known as Miguel who kidnaps Professor Ian Ilson, a scientist who has developed an experimental premature aging serum. So with this newly acquired deadly aging accelerant, Miguel plots to extort millions of dollars from the US government by exposing a city to this chemical and demanding the government pay for the antidote. But it's up to Captain America to race against time to stop Miguel and find the antidote before everyone in the city dies a death too soon. I don't want to die! Now, as I said before in my last review of the first movie, it's very much a, a product of the late 70s TV era. But this felt more like what you would say an overextended TV episode more so than a TV movie as it just dragged on way too long. They clearly were trying to turn this into a TV show uh, off the back of these movies but when you have a superhero that seems to spend most of his time walking around painting pictures, looking after his pet cat and occasionally stopping a mugger stealing an old lady's pension money, yeah, look, you kind of lose interest real fast. You realise I'm bored. I'm dangerously bored. I mean, look, for an epic character like Captain America, he just comes across as a very underwhelming hero. Um, as opposed to, like, in the first movie, they talk about the origins of Captain America being this guy who took down all these wartime villains, yet in this carnation, he, he just stops a couple of petty thieves once in a while. It doesn't really make him come across as this... American icon does it now for the main plot it's very basic you have a bad guy gets a bad chemical wants a ransom and he'll kill people you know to get it at very best it's a 30 minute TV episode idea stretched out to 88 minutes now you can see more action in this movie than you did in the last one but not much yeah it's not on the edge of your seat stuff either so we have a very basic story some soap opera-esque dialogue and some poor acting to boot this tv movie 
that should have been a TV episode, it's a real letdown. So for that, I'm only gonna give this a score of seven out of 30. So look, this is a very, very loose interpretation of the character from the comic books in a lot of ways. And it felt like with this movie, they were copying a lot of other TV shows that were popular at the time. For instance, uh, he works for a government agency, which isn't shield, but it's similar to a sort of CIA, FBI claim, just like in the Wonder Woman TV show. And when Captain America did anything, say, superhuman, you get this sound effect over the top. Kinda like this one. Yeah, from the Bionic Man TV show. Now, it's very much copying what was popular at the time, but not really setting itself apart from the rest. Now, this time we get the original costume from, from the whole, for the whole movie this time, except for that goofy helmet, you know. Remember kids. Safety first. And of course his super powered motorbike, which in this movie turns into a bloody hang glider no less, which results in one of the most drawn out chase scenes in movie history. It is painful to watch, trust me. This you can trust. Now for the cast, I'll have the list up here. And of course we have our star Reb Brown back as Cap, but as last time, he puts in a very lackluster performance, maybe more so than he did in the last movie. And But this time we get Christopher Lee as our bad guy, Miguel, who is supposed to be a freelance revolutionary terrorist from South America or the like, yet it's played by a British white guy. So, yeah, a bit of poor casting there. In retrospect, it was a poor choice. But he is the only one with any really acting chops, shall we say. Um, so with copying shows and the lackluster 70s TV effort gone into this, I'm look, I'm only going to be able to give this maybe an 8 out of 20. So special features. So we have no special features on this, which is no surprise as with these UK releases, it's clearly put together just to cash in on the new Marvel Captain America movies with Chris Evans. So no extra effort put into it. It's just the movies all on this release. So look, anyway, because there's nothing, all I can give it is a zero out of 10. Now, the critic score came in at 0% and the audience score was 77%. Uh, so look, no score from the critics, which is no surprise, but the surprise is the audience score at 77%. Something doesn't seem right, as was the score for the last movie, which was 79% as well. But look, after a little bit of research, I think I've cracked the case on this one. Oh, I solved it, all right. And it looks like people were putting a review to this movie thinking it was 2014's Captain America movie and not the 1979 one, hence the higher scores, which goes for the first movie as well, getting a higher rating on Rotten Tomatoes as opposed to what the general consensus is out there in the internet for this movie. So look, anyway, it is what it is. And if we round it up, we are going to get a score of 8 out of 10. Well, I do remember watching this one as a kid. And the main scene I kind of always remembered was the hang glider bike chase scene, which was not exactly how I remembered either from when I was a kid. <laughs> but this movie was definitely not as good as the first one. Not that the first one was great by any stretch of the imagination. Now... This movie was pretty boring. And as I said before, it was more of a stretched out TV episode as opposed to a movie. And I admit, I'll admit it, I looked at my phone a couple of times when I was watching it as there are so many scenes that just dragged out so long. And the pace of the movie was just so slow. This is taking too long. And the fight scenes, oh my God. Look, check this one out here. Uh, this is one where he throws his shield to take a mugger out. And I'm gonna put it up here with a timer and I'm not gonna slow it down. This is the normal speed. I mean, how long did it take for his shield to come back? And you're gonna tell me that plastic shield knocked him out, seriously? Look, I can hang my disbelief at the door with the best of them, but this is ridiculous, and it doesn't get much better than that. That could have been better. 
Look, overall, this movie is slow paced with a thin plot and not much to keep you entertained for the 88 minutes. So look, I'm going to give this a score of, uh, at best, 7 out of 20. So first up is collectability, and if we look at the collector scale, I would say this would be for your comic book geek, you know, as this one is something really only for your hardcore comic book fans and your serious DVD collectors out there. Now, as far as availability goes, the UK version triple pack that I've just shown you, it's very rare to get, because as of this video, I could not find any out there for sale on the net. But if you're just looking for the two pack movies of the 1979 movies, there, uh, there's no shortage of copies of the both of the DVD versions out there on your second hand markets, like eBay. As far as your average price goes, you are looking at somewhere between $35 to $60 for this UK triple pack that I've just shown you uh, on DVD. But if you're just looking for the double pack DVD version out there, you're looking at around between the $14 to $32 mark. And of course, there is nothing out there for Blu-ray or 4K HD as of this video. Now, the final score, we get a grand total of Ooh, 36 out of 100. Well, look, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty woeful movie with a pretty woeful score. So look, we asked the question, was this franchise a death too soon? Oh, not soon enough. It was not soon enough. It should have died after the first movie and should never have made it to a second one. That's for sure. Cash in, run of the mill sequel. Hey, so if you like this video and you want to see some more of my reviews, why don't you go check that one there? Or maybe you want to see some of my collection updates. I've got you covered too. Why don't you click that one there? And of course, don't forget to do the most important thing. Throw me a bat like and don't forget to hit that subscription button on the way out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.